if you're in a spot right now where things feel so hard in order to get what you want, to get the clients, to get the cash, to get the visibility, to get the progress that you're looking for in your professional life or personal life, the main reason why it feels so hard and why it's not happening faster for you is because you are holding on to things consciously and subconsciously that are weighing you down and making that journey 500 times harder than it needs to be. And you're blocking the abundance that's actually right there sitting in front of you. But we've got to drop this giant heavy backpack that you've been carrying around. And we're going to wake you up to that today. Be prepared to be shooketh. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? This is your host, Tiffany Carter, and you are listening to the show that is going to help grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, and everything in between. I am dumbfounded. I'm experiencing something that I want all of you to know is a real thing that so many of you are starting to doubt or have doubted, even though you might sometimes believe it, you do kind of backpedal and question it. And that is being able to have mega, mega program launches in your business, whether it's a course whether they're product sales, whether it's a group program, whether it's selling out a retreat. I am still sitting here in disbelief. I have an abundance situation. It's not a problem. We welcome this. It's kind of like when I would hear about people when I wasn't making that much money in like the corporate world. And I would hear about people And listen to conversations where people are like doing all of these things to manage their taxes and be able to mitigate their taxes. I don't mean like tax evasion, but doing things in order to not have to pay as many taxes. And I always found it to be like so weird, right? And then there's people who get really excited for a tax refund. And that might be one of you. And I am not judging you. I remember when tax refund time came around and it was very exciting. And I don't remember what that's like uh, in a long, long time because being a business owner, you are paying taxes. You want to pay taxes or at least have it be a break even where you don't owe anything and they don't owe you anything. That's a good thing. So like when I made that transition and I've gotten to a point of this amount of net worth where you have to do a lot of clever things and spending and I spend five to $6,000 a month on my CPA firm and my business manager, literally managing my taxes and also doing like all the accounting stuff, right? Like the payroll and all that. And That's part of it. And you could go, oh my God, Tiffany, that's insane. Like I would love to even be making, you know, 6,000 a month, but I'm telling you, you think it's so far away for you where you're at now. And it's really not. And that's what I mean by it's an abundance problem. Like the fact that I have to pay weekly taxes, that's wild, right? Like I could sit here and complain about taxes, but like I don't want to be in that mindset. Like, why Why do that? That's not a good energy. I get to pay weekly taxes because I'm so profitable. And I that also means if I'm that profitable, that means I am helping so many people. So we like this. So here's what I want to tell you before we get into this whole offloading and share a personal story, a breakup story that I feel needs to be told. It's very vulnerable, of course, but me holding in stories for the sake of being, preventing myself from being uncomfortable from oversharing doesn't serve anyone. And I've already done a gut check and a universe check and a God check, and it it has to happen. 
So this whole thing about selling out your stuff, I'm talking, you put, you put something out there and you're having a million dollar launch and you see other people online. I'm sure you've seen some people where they're like, oh my God, they sold out so fast. They had a, you know, a hundred thousand dollar launch, a 500,000 million dollar launches. I want you to hear it from me. Your rich bestie who serves it to you straight this shit is real. And I would have loved for someone, even me 18 months in to starting project me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and business coaching Academy, which by the way, if you're watching on project me TV, how do we feel about my custom sweatshirt? Let me know in the comments. I was very excited by this. I placed an order on Etsy. I've now, in addition to my Amazon problems, I have added Etsy and I received this in the mail and I thought it was from one of the listeners, but I'm like, but no one has my personal address. So I had to have ordered it. And then I went into Etsy to see, and I did order it. And I apparently also had to design it, but <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> but I'm very happy with the end result. I would have needed to have heard this. It would have been nice to hear from someone who I felt was relatable that, okay, you see all these people having these big launches. I can't account for a lot of these people. A lot of them give you marketing math. And so they tell you the revenue. They don't tell you the net after expenses, credit card fees, and taxes. There's people who lie, but then there's also people who don't. And I know these people who've been in this business, this type of model longer than me or have bigger audiences than me. And I would say 18 months in, I was like, especially when you start doing like anything group related, you're not one-on-one, -on -one, you're wanting to sell courses, you're wanting to fill up things and you're not quite filling them up or it takes so much time and energy and effort. And it's even stressful to get them to fill up, honey. I've cracked this motherfucking code and we're, we're not gatekeeping that code. Now that would be way too much detail to go into in a podcast episode, but I am more than happy once we're further along in this launch of selling with soul, which is only launched one time a year. It's a, my signature program. It literally is sold out. <laughs> I'm not joking. And it launched to the public. On Monday, it was already 92% sold out prior to the pre-launch sale being launched on Monday. So it's not even the official launch. It's the pre-launch. So obviously the abundance situation is, okay, I need to have a conversation with my team, with myself, with God, with the universe, with the aliens, with my spirit guides. <laughs> With Bernard, if you know my spirit guy, Bernard, shout out Bernard, on what to do because I can tell and I can feel in the energy more than ever that you are determined and you're sick of where you're at and you're willing to take the action. You're in enough discomfort where you're like, no, 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 we're doing this. I wasted a lot of 2023 messing around. I've wasted other years. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm getting my slice of the damn pie. And something I shared in Make Bank, which it would have been nice if I prepared more for this episode and had it pulled up. But the statistic that I pulled in terms of the online e-learning, e-education, -edu um, coaching um, course market is only going to be growing by the billions. It's going to grow more than $110 billion by next year. And when you do the math, all you need is 0.002% of that. It's actually 0.002% of that to make a million dollars a year. All you need is a micro slice of the pie. That's it. It's really here for you. And I'm evidence of it with this launch. So I had to go, okay, I know the people want it. I know they need it. I know what they're going to get out of it, but I have to make sure that I can handle energetically this container of people because you guys are wild, okay? 
like, I love you, but you guys are wild and I have to make sure I deliver the best. And clearly this is not a private coaching program. It's not a mastermind. This is a group coaching program, but I still want to make sure you feel heard and seen. So I am bringing on um, another lead coach that's not on the signup page. There's no promise of that. Um, but I am adding on another person full-time dedicated to this five-week live group coaching program so that there's someone else there who is trained for years on my techniques, on my methodology, has implemented them, has helped other people implement them, who's an amazing human being who I trust with my life. And this way, we can take more of you. But with that being said, that I'm leaving that open for more of you, those are going to sell out. I mean, literally, we were 50% sold out in less than 24 hours. That's how insane this is. So go check out the page, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash selling with soul. You can swipe up. It's in the show notes. It's at the top of my link in bio on Instagram and TikTok at Project Me with Tiffany. It's in the description here on YouTube. It's in all the places. And that's been Virgoized. Every single word, every question, every everything that you want to know is on that page because guess why? I've gone through that page about 500 times. So if you have a specific question about it, like after reading the page, including the frequently asked questions, and you want to know like, is this the perfect fit for me right now? I want to make sure I'm doing the right program with you, Tiffany. You can DM me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. Do not leave me a voice DM. I get way too many DMs during launches and the voice ones, I, can, I can't do it. It's not going to happen. I can voice DM you back, but please do a text DM with your question. And if you're a make banker, you have clear instructions inside the make bank Facebook group of how you can get your questions answered as well. So I'm just, I just wanted you to hear that. I wanted you to know that, and if I had something to say to the Tiffany who was 18 months in, you know, it's making some solid coin. Don't get me wrong. I mean, laughable coin for an exchange for the amount of work, right? Like insane, more than I've ever made, even in my other business that's an eight figure business that I that was blood sweat and tears because I didn't know another way you can have all that abundance you can serve all those people they are all sitting there but not unless you follow a clear proven strategy and keep showing up regardless and make a commitment to keep showing up. Whether you have three people on a live, you have 7,000 people, you have two people sign up, or you have 20,000 people sign up. If you aren't willing to be excited and honored to serve the two, why would the universe give you the 2,000? And you do have to check yourself because it is frustrating. I'm not going to bullshit you. It is frustrating when you put a lot of time and effort into something and you don't have as many people, you know, signing up, but that's every success story you hear on the planet. No one would buy my stuff. No one would manufacture my product. I got rejected by a gazillion, you know, different um, book agents. No publishing houses would take me there. I don't know very many people who weren't already kind of a celebrity and had a hookup that don't have that story. So why would you be any different? You and I aren't any different. Even though I already was an entrepreneur and I knew what the hell I was doing as a marketing, branding, and business growth strategist. So what? This was a new business model for me. I was making a personal brand off of my intellectual property. Of course, there's a learning curve. But I was willing to keep going, even, yeah, even having meltdowns, even, even having a pity party, you know, why weren't there more people? You'd think there are more people, blah, 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 blah. But then I got over it and you still show up and you get back into true act of service. 
service first and the sales will come. And there's going to be some great podcast episodes coming up where I'm going to dive deeper into some strategic things so that you can bump up your sales. Now, you really want to make a move that's selling with soul, but you can't wait on it because it's just going to sell out again. And I don't think I'm going to keep adding coaches because I don't just add anyone. I don't trust that many people in general. And you guys deserve to have the high level prestigious program that this is. You, you it ha can't be some random person just because they've taken the program before. No, no, no. That's not how we roll here. You get primo quality, the best of the best. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. And I don't care about, you know, leaving some money on the table. So make sure you go to that page. Don't wait. So let's talk about breakups. Breakups are so hard. And there's some breakups that you need to be doing. If you're not where you want to be and you feel like you keep hitting your own glass ceiling, I have been there so many times in my life. There's a behavior. There's a habit. There's a belief. There's a person, there's a situation that you are holding on to long past its expiration date. It's, it's something that is, for lack of a better term, it's rotten, it's toxic. And I'm not saying even necessarily, um, I'm not sitting here saying like you have to blame yourself for your bad habits and that this person is a horrible person. It's, it's basically when something is robbing you financially, spiritually, emo emotionally, mentally, physically, it is time to release. It is time to let go of this thing. And I want you to do this exercise. You can do it in real time with me. If you're watching on Project Me TV on YouTube, you can do it right along in the comments. I had to do this recently before I came into this launch. And this is, if you blow this off, you're going to regret blowing this off. This is one of the main things that I shifted and why this launch is my biggest launch I've had in the history of entrepreneurship of 16 years. And this is why it's not because Tiffany implemented a new strategy. No, there were some tweaks I made and I did, I experimented with a new strategy that was very planned out. And you never know if something's going to pay off until someone buys, right? Like there's no, like it, when I was in sales, it's like, none of it matters. You don't know if something's working or not working, no matter what someone tells you, unless they buy. A lot of people will tell you, I would totally go to your retreat. I would totally buy your sweatshirts if you put those out. I would totally buy a course from you on this. That's nice. That's very nice to hear that. Let's see what happens once it's for sale. Who, you know, that's how you know for sure if something's working. Same with your content. I don't give a shit about your shares, your saves, your likes. It's nice. And we do want high visibility to the right people, of course. But if those are not converting into cash and clients, we got a problem. Fun fact, most of my posts that have the lowest amount of engagement make me the most money. And I say most because there's always some exceptions to a rule. Most. You need to hear me on that. Because the content vampires don't want to consume the type of content that converts into making money because they just want to take, they just want to be enabled. They just want to feel good for a moment. They just want a dopamine hit and be out and continue scrolling. But the pieces of content that really um, grab someone, now those are what convert. And so what if you have 20 people who read it? Do you care if three of those 20 buys? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have buy for you if I were you, unless you're selling something that's $9.99, you know, and that's a whole nother story. So the exact exercise I'm taking you through right now is what I did 
before this launch. And without a doubt, this is one of the reasons why this launch is insane. I'm talking insane, like beyond my, beyond abundant shooketh. The whole team here is shooketh in a, such a great way. I had to get uncomfortable. I had to get quiet. I had to put my blinders on and remove myself from the unnecessary, unessential busyness, chatter, nonsense, media, tasks, you name it, in my life for, I would say, two solid weeks. I did this. Some of you need to do it longer because you've never done it before. I, I have I have done versions of this before for my personal life. I've never done it with this much intention. I could feel in my body and my nervous system that I was getting red flag signals, you know, check engine light signals. And I'm like, this is not good. Our bodies don't lie. I need to listen to this. I can't keep pushing forward. I have energy leakages. There's things that are going on and I need to get a hold of it. So I sat down, got quiet and I made an honest list for myself and I want you to do this and you can make different columns. If, if that feels more organized to you, my fellow office supply freaks, you guys can, you know, use your favorite journal for this. You can even have each column in a different color marker because that's exciting. And I would love for you to share these with me. If you don't want to share them publicly, obviously, because there's people's names on it you can DM them to me. I love seeing when you guys make these lists, the Virgo and me gets very excited. I want you to have columns, sections, each page be dedicated to one would be behaviors. One is beliefs, boundaries. I think we're going to stick with that. That's why I was doing that slowly. Because everything I want you to do really falls into those. That's pretty good that they are all start with a B. So we've got beliefs, behaviors, as I'm writing this down while I'm saying this, boundaries. And you can do this at any time you start. You don't like the results you're getting for your efforts. Your body is screaming at you. You're just not happy in your life. That doesn't mean you're not grateful for some things that you have in your life, but you're not where you want to be. You're doing the three B's. Get honest with yourself. I think we should probably start with the behavior one. That's the easier one to call ourselves out on because most of those we're conscious of. What are behaviors that you regularly do? It might not be every day or all the time, but you regularly do that you know are behaviors that are certainly not helping you reach the goals that you want to have. What are those behaviors? So, and I'm doing this with you. I'm sharing mine with you. So when I did this, my behaviors were I was scrolling a lot in my downtime and not like even scrolling and comparing, which we know I can get into at times, but just scrolling, just too much time um, with a device, a TV, shopping, not enough time in quiet, in nature, with an actual physical book or me maybe coloring or doing some kind of, you know, art or craft type project. And that's, that's not going to work. It was overconsumption, And even though I, I wasn't doom scrolling, you still are getting propaganda thrown at you. It still is um, taxing your nervous system to do it to that extent. And it's a form of dissociating. It's a form of not being present. So there's one behavior. Another behavior is I got slippery with um DoorDash again. <laughs> oh God. And now when you don't order from like Uber Eats or DoorDash for a while, then they start sending you shit like $30 off. And so 
I got a little slippery. I was going and picking up like chef prepared meal prep and I, I was just getting slippery with it. And that was not helping me feel my best self. So I made sure all the notifications are turned off and I turned off getting emails um, from DoorDash and those different, don't, those different ones. So the only way for me to, you know, do it is I have to manually go into the app. I'm not being prompted in any way. And I committed to making sure I have not just meals on hand, but like healthy snack foods on hand or snacks that will like satisfy me. Like I get salt cravings. So I got Parmesan cheese and pickles, for example, instead of Tiffany having, okay, I've got to out myself and some of my people who you guys, you know, been listening to the show and listened last year, especially, I definitely developed an addiction to the hint of lime Tostitos that caused me severe gas and it didn't matter. I would still eat them. I'm sure it was the chemicals that are sprayed on them. They're basically a Dorito, which we know are not healthy for you, but because it's a Tostito and they're restaurant style, um, for, and they're not as coated as a Dorito, I was telling myself they weren't that bad. So I started down that path again so that those had to be out. Those had to stop. Other behaviors were me taking on um, getting, taking on too many clients and I only take four private clients at a time, but I would like make an exception for someone who I was like, this person I know has it. This is someone who's, you know, I know, I know without a doubt, they're going to show up. They're an, a dream client, a wonderful person. I really want to help them in my big over giving heart, you know, would, would take them on. And, and, and I thought it was okay. Cause I'm not doing it because of the money. Listen, we like money and I deserve to get well paid for helping you guys make money and a lot of it, but that wasn't my intention behind it. So then I made an excuse that that made it then. Okay. But then what that does is there's a, I broke my own boundary. So this one could be in both categories. This could be in a behavior and in boundaries, right? I was breaking my own boundary with this behavior, which those, what really, the more I even say it out loud, they go hand in hand. Um, I was giving a lot of um, time listening to people complain about things in their life, but they really weren't making any major action to change it. And even though I am a great sounding board and I, and I have people who listen to me vent, and I do think that's an important part of, you know, friendship, even being a coach, um, even being neighborly, right? Like, I do think that's a good part of being a human, but I was taking on, it was too much. When you're someone and my fellow earth signs know this, when you are someone who's a very grounded person, especially when you're an empath, highly sensitive person who's done a ton of work, who's a safe person, you'll end up having a lot of people coming to you, you know, and, and wanting you to be the sounding board and you're their safe place, which feels really good that you can be that for them. But you take on all that energy. Now you you're being held back from where you want to go in life. You're putting the ox oxygen mask on other people before yourself. It's very slippery how this stuff shows up, which is why you have to write this down. And I will never tell you guys to write shit down unless it's like a must. This is a must. I'm giving you my playbook on what I did. Okay. So you definitely want to use it. Now let's go to beliefs. And you can obviously continue working through this. More will come up at different times throughout the rest of the week to add to your list, but I wanted to give you a head start. So let's look at the beliefs that you need to break up with because we've, we've gone down the behavior path you need to break up with. The beliefs, I need you to do this. And I am still, I've shook myself where I am not accepting any of my beliefs as fact. They 
any ones that like are old, right? They're not new ones that I've intentionally curated and have worked on and, um, and I nurture, but any beliefs that are just in there and I don't even know where they came from, every single one of them has to be looked at and looked at with a microscope because most of them are fake fucking news that we were fed in the school system, that we were fed through media, that we were fed in the corporate world, that we were fed in even innocently and also cruelly by our caregivers, by people who raised us, by people you're married to, by people you dated, by friendships, by siblings, by communities that you're in, even, even what race you are, what country you live in, what province you're in, you know, like, well, people like us or people who are from the Midwest or you know how, you know how I love my Canadians, you guys, like the people who live in Quebec in Canada, I, Canada is my second favorite country. So I'm very familiar with Canada. I'm going to have an amazing snow cabin there soon. And they'll be like, oh, well, the people in Quebec are like totally different. Right. And then there's a stereotype of that which is normal for any, I'm just using it as an example, just like in the US, it's like, oh, East Coasters, Southerners. I mean, hello, I live in LA. I mean, we drank $40 fucking smoothies. I mean, unbelievable. Like what's going on? What's going on here? So there's all these stereotypes and then we end up taking them on as fact. And then we end up living them out and acting on behalf of those without even fact checking them. Just because it's true for maybe a majority of people in your community, a majority of people who are women, a majority of people who are gay, a majority of people who have your net worth, who grew up in a trailer park, who work in corporate America, whatever it is, that doesn't mean it has to be true for you. It's not our business what's true for someone else. Just because it's true for your husband doesn't mean it has to be true for you. His, you know, his beliefs, her beliefs, your friend's beliefs, that's their business. That's not your business. And if you make it your business, now that needs to be on your behavior list. So I started going every belief that came up that made me feel like shit. Okay. Though that had to be looked at and I wrote it down. So one of my beliefs was in order to in order to have, you know, a big program where I'm helping hundreds of people that you're, you have to do some kind of fantasy marketing and manipulative marketing. And I refuse to do it. And what did I just do there? I just boxed myself into a corner because I'm not willing to do that. So therefore I'm telling myself, I can't have the abundance that I want because I'm saying I have to market and promote and sell it in a way that feels like shit to me. That's lying to people. And I'm not going to do that. Where, where did this come from? Probably from me making assessments and assumptions from watching a lot of fantasy marketers online being um, scammed by a few in terms of coaching. That's probably where this came from. And then when we believe something, we end up seeking confirmation bias evidence for it. So then it just piles it on and compounds itself. Right. And I wrote that down and I went, this is like, this is crazy. Like, why, why would I think this is true? I need to look at this. Is this belief serving me? Is this belief helping me get to where I want to go and reach my goals faster? Or is this holding me back? Well, obviously this one was holding me back and it's not true. Like where, where are the, where's the fact-based evidence? Where are the receipts for this evidence? Like, so then you need to start putting in contrary evidence for your new belief. So I went, I'm nor, and it's staring you right in the face. Like, for example, evidence. Let's say this is kind of a similar belief that you have. I'm evidence that no, that's not the case. And what's so funny is one of my dear friends, who's my life coach, she's staring me in the face and she's evidence. This is someone who does zero manipulation and I can vouch for it. And 
and has been in the online space for like something crazy, like 14, 15 years and has thousands of people in her things. But I, I, it's like, almost like I, I didn't even see that because my belief was so focused over here on the left. And I was ignoring the, the true, the actual real truth and the supporting belief for my dreams that was right, staring me right in the face. Quite frankly, my bank account is evidence of this. Let me think if there is another belief. Oh, I know. And of course, I'm sure Brenda, my subconscious mindset coach is listening. And she's like, I can't, I'm bad at imitating voices, but I could see her going, how about the belief that we've been working on for months now that the bigger you get and the more influential you get, that you're not going to have people support you, that they're going to be like jealous of you and backstab you and you're going to be left high and dry. <laughs> There's that belief. Because I grew up in a household with a narcissist mom where I was allowed to shine only so bright as so it served her and made her look like a good mom. But if I outshined her even by 1%, I was fucked. And by fucked, I mean, literally in terms of being abused and pimped out. And she would ignore me, which is called stonewalling. Like I would still be fed. I would go to school. I'd have clothes, proper care in that way. But ignore me. Um, a full emotional, verbal cutoff wouldn't even look me in the eye. Anyone who's been involved with a sociopath or a narcissist knows what I knows what I mean by this behavior. And of course, my little girl would be afraid because I'm shining brighter. I'm shining brighter. I'm shining brighter as I keep showing up, as I keep doing the work, as I keep putting my stuff out there. And of course, she's going to go, uh oh, are we shining too bright? We don't want, we don't want to get punished for this because that was taught over and over again, not just as a little kid, as a teen uh, and in my twenties, I didn't go no contact with her until I, uh, what was it somewhere in my, some, some point, maybe 34, 35. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. It was later than that. So this has been going on a long time. So some of some of these beliefs, th they have been going on for so long. Give yourself some grace. Don't sit there and go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm letting this belief, this behavior of mine prevent me from having the lifestyle and the freedom that I want. And I have been a victim to it. I've been a prisoner to it. I don't mind if you get a little angry, you're entitled to your feelings and anger can be a good thing. It can fuel you and propel you to take action to finally say, fuck it. I'm going to stop doing it. Right. But I just don't want you to sit there because then that would be a behavior that needs to go on your list. So if you're sitting in resentment and anger and frustration and disappointment, all those go on your behavior list. And what are the beliefs that are causing that? So you heard some of my examples about beliefs. Those need to be on there. And then you need to write out the belief that would be in support of the abundance in the life you want. What is what's, and I want you to say, and here's what the truth is. The truth is, is that, and, and I'm giving myself as an example, I am a child of God. I'm a child of the universe. I was put here for a divine reason and because I continue to shine and serve and help more people, I'm supposed to be doing that. And therefore the high quality support will be there. That doesn't mean some people aren't going to make the cut and fall off along the way because they can't handle the capacity of growth, right? Their abundance mindset is now not aligned with my frequency as I continue to rise. And that's all. And that's, that's why they're dropping off because I've got to let go of those people, which now leads us to the third B, the boundaries. I've got to allow those people, release them, let them go. That doesn't mean they have to be out of your life. Maybe they get put in a different category. Maybe they get put in like an outer circle. There's an example in my 12-step program I'm in 
that talks about a hula hoop, right? You're in the center of the hula, hula hoop. Maybe they're outside of the hula hoop, okay? Like they're, and then that doesn't mean three years from now, they do some heavy work on themselves and their frequency could end up getting realigned to where your frequency is now. You're just a mismatch. It's like being in a relationship when you continue to grow and evolve and do work on yourself and the other person isn't doing any or they're barely doing any, at some point you guys are going to grow apart and you, you, it's going to be too painful to stay there. It's just not, it's going to be misaligned. This happens in friendships. This happens with people who work for you. This happens in family dynamics and you've got to be willing to set new boundaries for these people. And it could be just for a season. It could be for years. It could be for life. And you have to be willing to do that because they are weighing you down. Sometimes it's a simple conversation. Like I, and here's some examples of mine. I had a conversation with someone who, um, a dear friend of mine, he gets very hopped up on politics. I know a lot of you people have someone like that in your life and is fixated, knows all the things, goes off on a rant. I can't talk about it. I don't watch the news. I have enough information where I know what's going on in the world, but focusing on that negativity and the chaos is not helpful. That is what they want us to focus on, to keep us small, to keep us stuck, to keep us in debt, to keep us broke. Do I want to give my precious time and energy away to that? No, and not even by proxy of a friend who is passionate and going off about it. So I just, I said, I can't do it. I love you. I can't be your political sounding board. And it's just, it stresses my nervous system out. I don't watch it on the news and I can't hear it from you. And this person has done enough work on themselves where, where he respects my boundary and heard me and it didn't take it offensively and not, nor did I say it offensively. So it can, there can be things like that in your life. You may need to have a conversation with a significant other who is not believing in your bigger vision for growing your business or starting our business or leaving a jobby job and doing something on your own. They might not understand even the online space. It might seem, you know, hocus pocus to them. They might think it sounds even like a hobby. A lot of people thought me starting a podcast. Well, that's cute. That's a nice little vanity project Tiffany's doing, even though I knew this ain't no vanity project. I don't need a vanity project. If I was going to do that, I would open up a coffee shop. You know, it's like, no, this is, this is something I was meant to do. I love to do, and I'm going to monetize the fuck out of it. So you might need to set a boundary with, you know, your partner in saying, I am not happy where I'm at in this particular area of my life. I want to leave a legacy. I want to contribute on a bigger level. I want to, for us to have lifestyle changing cash. And I would regret not going for blank, whether that is you joining selling with soul and you're having to have that conversation or it's you investing um, time where you need um, people in your life to give you some extra support to allow you to have time um, to be able to, to grow this business or write this book or do this thing that's been on your heart. But it's how you say it to somebody and present it. And it starts with you being honest about it with yourself first. What boundaries do you need to set? Is there a friend that gives you these like little digs that are sarcastic and you kind of laugh them off, but really they aren't really helping you, right? You can laugh them off just because you can tolerate something. I don't want that needs to be on the list. You know, we don't tolerate. Tolerate is a different word for settling. You don't, you don't tolerate. Yeah. If you have kids and they're having a temper tantrum. Yeah, of course we, we, we tolerate things like that. Okay. 
but we don't need to tolerate um, adult behaviors and make excuses for people. But you have to say something. I know you're probably just being funny and sarcastic, and I am not in a place in my life where that feels good. Um, and I would appreciate, you know, you not not doing that with me. Is that sound like something you can do? And they might say yes and continue to do it. And then you have a choice to make. Then you detach. You do not go back to tolerating. What you tolerate will continue and it will continue to eat at you and it will keep you in scarcity. It will prevent you from having everything that I know you want. I had to set quite a few energetic boundaries with myself and other people in this last two weeks. And it was so clear that I had to. I had to literally put my blinders on and I was, I feel I was nice about it, but that doesn't mean people weren't offended or didn't feel abandoned by me. When you, when you prioritize taking care of yourself and you do it in a way that is firm, respectful and done and done out of love for yourself and you've conveyed it the best that you can at any given time. That's all you can do. You're not responsible for someone else's reaction to that. And quite frankly, if someone has a reaction to it, that's a red flag. They have a reaction to you needing to put blinders on and take care of yourself and cocoon yourself for a time being. And they can accept that or respect that lovingly and they make it about them. Now you have your answer. This is not someone who's meant to be in your life right now. And when I cut out all of the noise and all of the energy leakage that I was creating and that I was allowing, I don't want to say I was, you're not a victim to anything. You're either creating it within yourself or you're allowing it, or we can use the word tolerating it or settling for it. And when I did that, there was a level of grounded peace that I experienced. Not immediately. I had some guilt. Okay. I had guilt because I was like, God, am I being selfish? Am I being a horrible person? And am, am I turning into a recluse? I had all sorts of wild thoughts because I'd never done anything like this before to this extent and this strategically. And thankfully, I have people in my life who are so loving and supportive and believe in me and celebrate me. And they're like, no, you're doing this. This has to be done. This is a priority or you're not going to be able to have the capacity to receive on the level that you want because you're bleeding out so much energy. You, you're, you won't have the capacity for it. So yeah, there were a few days where it kind of messed with me and then a peace washed over me. Ugh. And if you were in three days to make bank, there is no way you didn't experience that energy being transferred to you by watching. I truly believe that's why 5,800 of you signed up and thousands of you watched it and posted about it and are still talking about it and were bummed when it was over because my energy was grounded, sincere. It was pure. It was abundant. And when you're in that kind of energy, there is no way that that won't magnetize people to you because who doesn't want that kind of energy? That's the ultimate feeling that we want, that grounded conviction that you're doing what you're meant to do. It's like my zero fucks given. That's really what zero fucks given is, right? It's like, I'm willing to cocoon myself and nurture myself and honor myself and put the oxygen mask on myself, not, not in selfishness, but for the greater good. Because hadn't I done that, I wouldn't have met so many of you. 
you listening right now might not have even heard of this show. You wouldn't be in Selling with Soul, which is then only going to make you a ton of money, which is only going to be able to transform your relationship with money, what happens in your family, your lifestyle, the legacy you leave, the domino effect of that. This is what we do in order to serve the greater good of all. That's what true abundance is. And it starts with us. Hence the name of my brand, Project Me. You're the most exceptional project of your life. But we we forget that sometimes, especially us overgivers, people pleasers, empaths. We 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 fall off track. And you are meant to hear this episode and do these three B's to get yourself back. And you will, without a doubt, see a correlation to your bank account to a point where guaranteed you're going to email me, you're going to DM me, you're going to comment on my posts and go, oh my God, Tiffany, I I can't even believe it. You will have an abundance situation and you want one. We welcome these. Hashtag abundance situation. I can't wait to hear about them. You can swipe up to get the details, see all the testimonials, all the things, the bonuses for selling with soul. This is our pre-launch pricing where you get a thousand dollars off. You get my exclusive Lux bonus of being able to learn my TikTok playbook on how to monetize your TikTok for business in less than 15 minutes a day. That's worth over $4,500. You are getting so many other incredible bonuses in there. And this does not happen again until 2025. This is your shot. We made payment plans to where money is not going to be an issue. You, There's even a 12 payment plan, okay, from the Bank of Tiffany. And I've done that because I know what this will do for you as long as you show up, follow through, you're open and willing, and do the work. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you.